Hello, entire internet. I am Chris, otherwise known as Critically Accursed, and I am dying to get back into Pathfinder Kingmaker because I am on a big Pathfinder kick lately, even though I'm not playing. But first order of business is... something juicy. <laughs> Tonight's stream is sponsored by... Uh, I have a four-pack of Guinness Nitro Cold Brew Coffee Beer, and it's okay. It is certainly okay. It tastes like Guinness mixed with coffee. Both things that I don't mind. I like coffee more than Guinness, but uh, it, it seems to have worked out pretty well. So, uh, today we're going to be picking up where we left off with our... Uh, great uh great hero of the stolen land strawberry shortcake and her uh mastodon companion that has been named whipped cream <laughs> and before we really really get into it i do have a little bit of explaining to do for those of you that have been following along for the one stream i've done so far and the explaining that i have to do involves the uh, character build we're going with for Strawberry Shortcake and uh, what I've kind of done recently. So those of you who were here last time or who have watched the VOD <laughs> uh, on uh, Ye old YouTube may note that some things have changed regarding Strawberry Shortcake. <laughs> yeah, I, actually, Matt, yeah, you can range sneak attack enemies. It's I think it's easier in this version of the game than it is in Tabletop. Like, significantly so. Uh, the modding may have toned it down a little bit, but you can definitely still range sneak attack enemies. <laughs> uh, I do not think we can give Whipped Cream weapon proficiency, unfortunately. So, uh, what I've done is I gave some thought to who Strawberry Shortcake is and what we're doing and what I want to, uh, how I want to build the character. Initially, I was going for a punchy dex build. <laughs> um, and I was like, hey, Chris, you always go for dex builds. Let's do something a little different. So my mind settled on Halfling Barbarian, which I think fits the character that we were going for in the first place. A small little bundle of strength and rage, as it would be. So there's a barbarian archetype called Mad Dog that gets an animal companion. The trade-off being... Uh, you don't start off with rage, at least in this version of the game. You get it at like fourth level. Um, so, eh. The other kind of downfall about this build is since we're a halfling, our strength is not anywhere near <laughs> where I'd like for a barbarian. For comparison, we have a barbarian in our party, an NPC. Her name is Amiri. She is great. She has a 16 strength, um, which is actually just slightly higher than ours. But uh, if you're playing a Barbarian, you're probably looking at at least an 18 con or an 18 strength, I'm thinking. Uh, instead, what we end up with is someone who's strong in all three physical abilities, but uh, less so in all the mental stuff. I think it was Seth at the beginning of last stream that was like, hey, go dump Ints. And I'm like, no, that's stupid. And then I started thinking about it and I decided that is stupid, so I'm going to do it. <laughs> So our neutral evil Strawberry Shortcake is as much of a powerhouse as she possibly can be for a Halfling Barbarian, but she's uh, not very charismatic and she's about as smart as a stack of bricks. <laughs> um, Whipped Cream is about the same, except I was actually able to name Whipped Cream Whipped Cream, so I hope everyone appreciates the name and spelling choice I have going on here. And uh, I found out that animal companions can equip bracers, so I slapped on a pair of bracers of armor plus one on the whipped cream to give the dude a meaty, meaty AC of 21. So uh, we, we have a good couple of frontliners here, and the overall idea of the build, so you know moving forward, is uh, I think we're going to step into a few levels of Hunter after this and uh the reason we're going into hunter is because i think at like third ish level hunters get um they have animal companions and one of the abilities they get is that any teamwork feats the hunter has is automatically given to their animal companion 
and I want that for this build. I want these two down here, the, this amazing buddy cop duo to uh, be a force of devastation together on the battlefield. Matt's asking if she's still stealth good, and the answer is as well as a uh, medium sized Mastodon could possibly stealth <laughs> with a plus six. So, yes, Mastodon tactics are still on the line. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, that's the build so far. I think we're going to do Barbarian, go into Hunter for a little bit, and then probably swing back into Barbarian for uh, uh, to build up Rage, because Rage gives you extra strength and extra con. It's just survivability and damage on the battlefield. It's a good Barbarian thing to have. So that's what's changed so far. Everything else is pretty much the same. We still have the same party that we ended up with. And uh, so we have our good boy uh, Harem the Cleric over here our undead Inquisitor Jathel, and our uh, other barbarian, Amiri, who uh, wields a giant fuck-off sword. So, you know, good times are going to be had by all. And some goals for today are going to be to go to this first outpost. Uh, let's see, where is it? Um, swing over to... Uh, Oleg's trading post see what's going on with him probably dump off a whole bunch of daggers it looks like and bows and other shit that we don't need to uh, build up money because we basically want as much money as we can possibly get all the time always and forever uh, so that's the game plan for today and we'll kind of see where it takes us and where we end up so uh, for those of you unfamiliar with the game, you have this fancy map stream, uh, map screen. You do overland travel and uh, sometimes you get random encounters. Um, and a lot of this game is about exploration. You go around the map and find locations, dive into those locations, see what's up. And it uh, looks like this random encounter just happens to be a battle with some uh, doggos, <laughs> some very vicious doggos. Uh, so... <laughs> Ready for the map graphics, big shook. Let's move uh, whipped cream like slightly behind this dude. <laughs> big old mammoth strats. I'm just trying to set up the flank. Okay, cool, already had a half, half health. That's uh, perfect, but we are flanking on this one, so we can see if we can't uh, take it out right now. Out and that's a big yes. <laughs> I've never played a Halfling Barbarian before, and I'm pretty psyched to do it in this. So our Inquisitor can maybe also set up a flank over here. Uh, yes. Unworthy. Uh, she's great because of the scythe, her ridiculous uh, damage output with the scythe, 8 to 14. It's pretty great. Did you start? You entered rage at the beginning? Why would you do that? <laughs> you don't need to get so angry about fighting good boys. Uh, but we can stick with it, I guess. And we can see if we can skin them for uh, a very small amount of money. A little bit, a little bit. Worth two gold each. Wonderful. And uh, that's basically all how every random encounter in this game works. You get dropped into a generic battlefield and uh, get thrown face to face with some enemies. And usually you win. <laughs> Sometimes you don't. I suppose it's worth mentioning that the way I play these sorts of games, uh, Pathfinder Kingmaker, Baldur's Gate, Icewind Dale, is uh, I basically just save a lot, and if someone in my party dies, I just, like, reload for my last save, because dealing with dead party members is such a pain in the ass. Uh, if you're not carrying some sort of revival scroll or something like that, you have to trek all the way back to town, drag their body with you, and it's usually just easy to accept that you uh, fucked up in the encounter, and... Uh, reload from whatever last you saved. I 
won't be halted. No, don't run away. It's just a mammoth. Come back. No, talk to me. What do you? Okay, I can't talk to him. This isn't an Iron Man run. This is a for for funsies run. I, I technically have a cheat mod installed, so I could have na so I named Whip Cream, because you can't do it. You can't name your animal companions unless you have a uh, specific mod that lets you tinker around with the game a little bit installed. I think it's called Bag of Tricks over in Kingmaker Nexus. And uh, something tells me that something shady is going on here. Just a little bit. Should actually probably heal before running into this. <laughs> uh, yeah, why don't you chug a lug? There we go, perfect, full health. First try. Okay. In the name of the Stag Lord, the ha ha lawful authority in the stolen lands, we demand this week's tax and some beer. I'll drink to that. Uh, and there's some sleazy dialogue. <laughs> Quiet down, dimwits. A leg. We're just here for the Stag Lord's tax. Hand over the money, and we'll be on our way. Spoken like a true bandit. And you know she's important because she actually has a name. You want to drink some of my blood too? I'm sick of you. You're like locusts. You think you control everything around here just because you put up that painted rag of yours? You come here, squeeze us dry, and come up. Yep. <laughs> uh, it's at that point in time he noticed the Mastodon wandering into the trading post. Uh, let's see. So, I can't ask what we should pick every single time I come to a dialogue choice. As much as I would love to give every choice to the chat for the sake of expediency, I will not. Instead, I know who uh, Strawberry Shortcake is generally. A um, small ball of neutral evil rage. And uh, she strikes me as someone who has very little patience for things. So um, we're not going to explore all dialogue if it doesn't make sense. We're going to try to RP just a little bit. And we must pull every choice. Um, so I think that instead of asking about what's going on or pretending that we're not interested in bloodshed or running away like a huge coward... Um, why don't we just uh why don't we just attack him? We can't retreat. <laughs> they just have one mastodon. What are you running away for? Alright, so the named character fucks off, leaving a whole bunch of goons for us to raffle stomp into the ground. And to do so. This guy's tough. Uh, hmm. They're probably not that tough. Probably. But I do need to turn on this. Uh, so another cool thing about this game is that you have certain knowledge abilities, like knowledge nature, um, knowledge religion, I think. Where is it? Ah, uh, your skills. Knowledge Arcana, Knowledge World, Lore Nature, Lore Religion. And when you come up against enemies, uh, everyone in your party basically rolls these knowledge abilities. And if any of them roll well enough, you can actually get information on the enemies that you're fighting. And you can do this in regular Pathfinder too. It functions just a little differently, but it's basically the same. So if you beat certain DCs with your knowledge check, basically, you're going to figure out the enemy's stats, which helps you strategize. Uh, but Jaythel apparently can't understand anyone here. So I'm just gonna have her move in and charge if she can. Totally can. Nice. Soaked up 10 points of damage. Good for him. He is big, almost dead. No, no, what are you doing? Don't do that. I mean, I guess I can't really fault them for not charging into the front lines when there's a, <laughs> a, ma a Mastodon standing in their way. But, 
They're trying to run away from my party, and I don't think Strawberry Shortcake's having any of that. <laughs> yeah, I love her little run. It's so good. Let me plop you right here, bud. I also like his waddle. It's very great, very great, very good stuff. I just like how we missed that core attack, though. And you, Amiri. Uh, let's just go here and attack. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'm doing this all the time now. This is my life. I'm full-time Pathfinder Kingmaker. That, that's me. That's what they call me. <laughs> the Kingmaker. Critically Kingmaker. Slow boy harem in the back is gonna do nothing. He's gonna do nothing. Very pro Pathfinder streamer. Yes. I'm actually, uh, I'm calling in sick tomorrow and I'm just gonna stream through the night, straight through the day, nothing but Pathfinder. All the time, all day, every day. We charge, yeah, we can charge, great. <laughs> he was doing his best, he tried so hard. These guys are super fucked. This guy has like no hit points left. How are you doing? Uh, good old Oleg's actually holding in there. It's uh, pretty embarrassing if he died. So good. And uh, because our Mastodon has uh, two attacks, if he doesn't move, uh, take a swing at both. Which is great. I think it's a gore and a slam. Perfect. And we leveled. Oh, that's super exciting. Sneak attack Mastodon. Yeah, so the uh, mod I have that let me name the Mastodon also lets you tinker with a lot of stuff in this game. And I think you can potentially add things to characters. I might be able to add weird shit to the Mastodon. It's totally cheating, though. <laughs> uh, I'll loot the bodies and we can level up and check it out. Okay. You guys are blocking the corpses. Take a step back. I really wish there was a mod that just let me level up the animal companion into Rogue. But, uh... Let's see if I can bring up the uh, mod menu. Save first in case it crashes my game for some reason. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> bag of tricks, cheats and tools. Let you finagle with things. You can finagle with a whole bunch of stuff. You can do a whole many, many, many cool things and change your game. Um, it's a party options that let you mess around with people. Yeah. Um, change whipped cream's alignment for all that's worth. Mess around with stats, give them more stealth. <laughs> Put everything into the Macedon. Yeah, well, the character build I settled in is hopefully going to make the Macedon as good, if not better, than my main character, than Strawberry Shortcake over here. Uh, is there anything that lets me... Oh, I can't add sneak attack. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's it's a uh, big time cheating. Uh maybe after we get a few okay, okay, I'm hearing Matt out. Matt, give me a big brain energy. What are you thinking? I was thinking the same thing, that We had sneak attack when we hit a milestone. I was almost thinking, because uh, there's a teamwork feat called outflank. Thinking maybe when we get outflank together, that might not be a bad idea to slap a d6 sneak attack into the Mastodon. <laughs> um, whipped cream's alignments. Uh, as a Mastodon, it's default true neutral. Um, I kind of like it as true neutral. kind of like it. That uh, whipped cream just pound around with the uh, neutral evil ball of rage that is strawberry shortcake. 
So uh, we'll revisit this when we level up a little bit. But uh, yes, speaking of level up, we can just uh, do that. Let's uh, build some characters up. We'll save the best for last. So uh, we have a lot of a lot to think about now because <laughs> we have to level up all our all of our uh, party members, too. So we do have Amiri, who is the uh, game's base barbarian, and we can certainly keep her going down the barbarian track, which is pretty good. She'll have great damage output and uh, tons of hit points. I don't think giving her a splash of really anything else is super useful. I know in previous playthroughs I considered, you know, slapping in a little bit of fighter for more feats. Um, but I think she does pretty good as a flat barbarian, especially if our main character is multi-classing a little bit. I think that'll balance out. So I'm inclined to keep her with barbarian, um, especially since she gets uncanny dodge at second level, which is pretty dope. Uh, makes it so you can't be caught flat footed. Uh, <laughs> this is a good thing to get if you can. Rogues get it, barbarians get it, I think monks get it. So, and a rage power, which is great too. So we'll just do that. Slap on. Is that what she already had? Came with default? Uh, let's just do bonus set point. More HP is good for frontliners. Nothing goes up. Get some skill points. Yeah, I need to see uh, what rage powers are available in the base game. There's only like a handful of rage powers. I think with the mods I included, there might be like a lot more. So um, I think the next screen will bring it up. Um, we'll give her more athletics. Perception is always good. Persuasion for intimidate. Uh, uh, a little bit of mobility. Not that it matters super much. All right. So it does look like there's maybe slightly more uh, rage powers. So what rage powers are, they're basically um, special abilities that typically only activate when a barbarian enters rage, the whole core components of the barbarian class. And uh, there's trees you can go down. So if you get these lesser rage abilities, they'll open up the greater versions of them down the line. And I think picking up a stance is generally pretty good for barbarians, uh, at least in this game. It's a good uh, just general catch all rage power that you'll pretty much always use. Um, like this one gives you a plus one to hit. Is there any trade off for that? Or is that just a flat plus one to hit? I guess that's just a flat plus one to hit. That's pretty good. But uh. Reckless Stance is the same thing, but you take a penalty to AC, which I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, that ah, beats me. Uh, superstitious, I think, is also good because it increases your saving throws against spells and spell-like abilities. That helps Barbarians increase their speed. Ah. Uh. I'm almost inclined to do lethal stance, but we can see kind of what we're building up to, maybe. Um, <laughs> Ghost Rager. <laughs> um, it's my online persona. Ghost Rager. <laughs> it's my, uh, was it, aim screen name. Spellbreaker, good. I think she's going to be mostly damaged. She's definitely not going to be like an AC tank at all. Um, which is why I wouldn't really do guarded stance. Although, um, is it this one? Yeah, this one gives her a bite attack. That's always fun. Of course, this also gives a bite attack. <laughs> um, ah, oh, decisions, decisions. Kind of don't mind that. I might just take lethal stance, though. Yeah, I think I'm just going to take lethal stance. 
whipped cream's favorite color is probably cream colored i'm thinking um if not cream colored then like strawberry red <laughs> all right yeah i think that'll settle up for her so that should be pretty good. I think I also have uh, retraining, the ability to retrain characters on. So if I mess up on any choices, I can just kind of reset them later on. Our Inquisitor is going to be uh, a little bit more interesting to figure out what direction we want to go in. Because base Inquisitor is fine. I don't really think... I, I'm guessing for a lot of these NPCs, we don't really need to consider much multi-classing. Just because... Honestly, 1 to 20 in their base class should be pretty okay. And I think this game throws maybe one character of each base class at you. So I'm perfectly fine keeping her with not Investigator, with Inquisitor. Um, we're going to get a better initiative out of it. And then at level 3 is when solo tactics kick in. So she can just start making use of teamwork feats on her own. Even though we're going to be throwing around teamwork feats onto all of our characters probably doesn't need a bonus spell honestly the uh, skill selection is so small in this game that I feel like for uh, uh, favorite class options taking bonus skills is a little eh so I'm just going with hit point and uh, let's see wisdom's pretty good we can crank up that perception I don't think she's going to need persuasion. Aram should have enough lore religion to carry us. Give her a little bit of stealth. That's fine. And some mobility. And some trickery, since I don't have a roguelike character in the party. In fact, maybe we can give her a couple of trickery. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Stealth team. Everyone stealths except for Strawberry Shortcake. <laughs> She's just surrounded by a whole bunch of invisible allies. The rogue is the Macedon. You are correct, sir. <laughs> Alright. And to know the first level spell. So. Uh, I think Harem is a better spellcaster. I think he has a slightly higher wisdom than she does. Um, which makes him better for offensive spells and would make her better for, like, defensive and buffing spells. Lend Judgment might not be too bad. Because uh, that helps her share her class feature with a, an ally. Shield of Faith is always good. Uh, remove Fear is situational. Protection from alignment's fine. Less is always good. Uh, big decisions today. Uh, we'll have her pick up less. That's should be good. Um, so the thing is, Inquisitors are spontaneous casters, so they have you, you basically select spell what spells they have access to, and from that pool of spells, they can cast spells a certain number of times a day, as opposed to Harem, our cleric, who gets to prepare a certain number of spells each day from like the entire list. So picking spells for our Inquisitor, who's a spontaneous caster, is a little bit more important um, because we want to make sure that the spells we throw at her scale well with uh, her level. You know, that's going to they're going to be useful for as long as possible. So like uh, Shield of Faith down here uh, gives you a plus two deflection bonus to AC plus one for every six levels you have. So it just gets better as she levels up, which is why it might be slightly better than Bless, which is just a flat plus one. It never gets better. It never really changes. Um, it lasts longer as you level up, but uh, Harem being able to also pick pretty much most of these spells, uh, you know, uh, helps. Kind of want this, though, because it's Inquisitor specific. So I think I'm just going to go with that. Yep. Yep. Hope you guys like leveling up. I love leveling up. So. 
<laughs> no, it's not super exciting. <laughs> but uh, I enjoy it. I enjoy it. I feel like a lot of the uh, fun of these games is hitting that milestone where like your whole party levels up and you just get to sit back and figure out the direction every character in your party is going to go. So with Harem, I actually want to see his stats real fast. So he's a great spellcaster because clerics run off wisdom and he has an 18, which is really good, which means I can use him for offensive spellcasting. And I think I probably will. He's a decent frontline character. He suffers a little bit from the slow decks, but because his con is relatively high, he's going to have a decent chunk of hit points and uh, he has a decent strength, too. So we can kind of build him as an offensive spellcaster and a part time frontliner. So keeping him with Cleric is, I think, pretty good. <laughs> Just kind of across the board. I can't really imagine a uh, situation where I would really cross class him. Uh, although Warp Priest is kind of interesting. Uh, I think we're going to keep with Cleric for simplicity, though. Although Warp Priest is kind of interesting. No, 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 no. <laughs> So as you can see, clerics don't really get a whole bunch. Their whole bunch is the spell selection. They get clerics to get access to some pretty great spells and they get uh, domain abilities, a couple at first level and a couple at eighth level domain abilities being dependent on the alignment or depending on the portfolio of the deity that you worship. And his is who's your deity? Don't tell me here, do you? Uh, I forget off the top of my head. But whatever, he has the Chaos Domain and the Destruction Domain. He's a very, very edgy character. Yeah, everyone in this game uh, gets an equal amount of XP. You can set it in the options so that only your active party gets XP. But because it's very beneficial to have characters you've sidelined also level up with you, um, I, I've turned that off, so XP you generate is just split amongst your six party members, and then everyone on the sidelines gets like the same amount. So pretty much everyone's going to level up at the same time. I'm going to slap more HP on him, and we're going to put his one skill point in the only place that matters for him. And that's it. That's not it. I also have to pick out some of his spells. So we swing over to his spell book and we can see he has uh, so cantrips. He just has access to these four cantrips, cantrips you can cast an unlimited number of times every day. And he has guidance, which is a plus one to a attack roll saving throw a skill check. Great. Always cast guidance. Never stop casting guidance. Light you'll probably never use in this game. Resistance is just a plus one to saving throws for like the next saving throw you get. And then virtues one temporary hit point, which is eh. you'll always use guidance. You'll probably never use the rest of these. Now, his first level spells, like I said, he has access to all of these. He can technically cast any of these spells, but you have to prepare them. So he has three slots he can prepare right now, plus a domain slot. So the domain slot must be one of his domain spells up here. So he has protection from law or true strike, both of which are Kind of, eh, I hardly ever use true, to, I hardly ever use true strike. Too much Guinness. Um, just because it seems like such a niche thing to just get a plus 20 insight bonus to your next attack roll. Eh, it's very situational. Protection from law, I could imagine coming into play a little bit more often. So I'm actually going to have him forget that one and have him prepare protection from law. And then down here. He came uh, pre-prepared with two blesses, but I think we can do a little bit better than that. Never too much Guinness. I used to drink a lot of Guinness back in um, college. I think it was one of the first beers I got into for some reason. There are better beers out there. <laughs> there are like significantly better beers out there. Nothing really against Guinness, but uh, uh, these days it's not something I usually really have a hunger for. So Ray of Sickening is pretty good. 
Um, touch of bloodletting. One point each round's kind of eh. Summon monsters not too terrible for right now. Actually, it's only one round per level. It's actually not too great right now. Command is eh. I think what we want to do is cause fear is probably not too bad. Uh, if they fail, if they fail their will save, um, they become frightened. They'll run away. That's a good uh, kind of like, hey, you, I don't want to bother with you right now <laughs> um, sort of tool. So I'm going to forget these and I'm going to have them prepare a cause fear a ray of sickness. And since Jathel doesn't have bless, I'm going to throw in bless down here. So he can't use any of these right now. He has to rest first. The uh, reason I'm not preparing any healing spells is because as a cleric, he can convert any of these spells into a Cure Light Wound spell. It's uh, just something clerics specifically can do, um, which I think it didn't always used to be that case in like Dungeons and Dragons. They weren't able to um, convert spells. You'd actually have to prepare your healing spells. And I think Pathfinder adding in the ability to be like, Hey, you can prepare a spell list, but still be a healer if you need to by converting spells on the fly to healing spells really helped people who play clerics play them in more interesting manners because they're not just filling up their spell list with healing spells. He is a chaotic neutral cleric, which means I think that it means that he had to choose if he was uh, aligned with positive energy or negative energy. And he, the game was kind enough to uh, have him lean towards positive energy. So the uh, star of the show, Strawberry Shortcake down here. We want to go into Hunter, I think. Because... So Hunter, we're going to get some uh, divine spells, which our wisdom isn't super great, so we're not going to get like a lot of them and they're not going to be useful for offense, but we're going to get them. And there's some decent buffing divine spells out there. Animal focus is a buffing ability in its own right. I have no idea how it functions in Kingmaker because it was added through a mod. I do have a rough idea of how it works in the tabletop version. And basically you get to select a certain kind of buff to apply to your character and to your animal companion, to the Mastodon. So by taking our first level, we'll kind of be able to see what we're playing with. Um, our animal companion is going to get better. And our real goal here... Oh, we're going to get outflank automatically at level 2. Our real goal here is to get up to level 3rd for Hunter so that any teamwork feats we pick up, our animal companion, Whip Cream, is also going to have. And from there, maybe we'll take a dip into Brawler Wild Child for some oh, very weird shenanigans, but it'll most likely be back to Barbarian. I don't think any of the archetypes are really worth it for this build. This weird Primal Companion one might be cool, but I think we're going to go Base Hunter. Barbarian. Our Christmas 9, dude. Um, of skill points to play around with, and uh, the Mastodon has all the stealth, so I guess we don't need stealth. Take a little bit of nature, and um, just a dash of persuasion, mostly for intimidate checks, I think. So I don't really want to waste a feat to like use strength instead of charisma for intimidate checks on this build. So I think that's where we're going to settle up. And like I said, we get some spells. So again, a spontaneous caster, pretty sure. So we had to pick two spells. Hey, frog, how's it going? Uh, so we had to pick two spells to um, get access to. We can give the Macedon an Acid Maw, and that sounds pretty good. 
Pick up Cure Light Wounds for all the good that's going to do in the long run. I really have know about that one. Lead Blades is okay. Good? Is it good? Might be good. It's just more damage, basically. Not a lot more damage. But, uh, Frostbite, good for the pun. Also get Magic Fang, plus one enhancement bonus, attack and damage rolls for the Mastodon. Savage Maw. Is that a bite attack for me? Yeah, it is. Um, hmm. <laughs> yeah, we got shout outs now. Frog playing uh, Symphony of the Night, one of my, uh, I think, one of my all time favorite games. <laughs> it's cool, dude. Um, I actually just liked you were playing Symphony of the Night. It's been a very long time since I've seen that played or thought about playing it. Uh, okay, so I know I want Acid Moth. The question is, what other spell do I want? Lead Blades is good for me. Magic Fang is good for the Mastodon. Savage Maw is funny for me. <sighs> Savage Maw? Maybe? <laughs> uh, yeah, there's a few games out there that I'll just uh, spring to talk about. And Symphony of the Night... Fire Emblem Three Houses, Pathfinder Kingmaker, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. One minute per level versus one minute per level. Oh, let's do Lead Blades. <laughs> Look at all these animal focuses. Oh, man. What do these do? Okay. Plus two to strength. Plus two dex. That one's going to be useless for this game. Also useless for this game, probably. Uh, situational at best. Plus two con. That's funny. Perception. I have companions to perceive things. I have a mastodon to stealth things. Although I can't apply these to my Mastodon, so we can give him a plus four to stealth, which is funny to me. Yeah, that should be fine. And then the Mastodon levels up. Aw, yeah. <laughs> what do we get here? Uh, it's going to get plus one to strength and dex. And evasion. So, uh... No damage of succeeding at reflex saving throws on certain spells. <laughs> yeah, my Mastodon's basically a rogue. I guess we're just going to keep pumping stealth, huh? <laughs> like, it, I think the Mastodon increases in size at level 7, which will hurt stealth by like 4 points. But to hell with it, I guess. And we get a feat for the Mastodon. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, man. What do we even do here? Skill focus stealth? It'd be such a waste. Power attack's good. Power attack's really good. Stealthy. I'm thinking power attack, in all honesty. Yeah, you don't get that for free, do you? No, I don't think so. It'd be weird. Yeah, I guess we'll swing for power attack. It doesn't hurt. Minus one to hit, plus two damage. And he should be good to go. All right. 
So I clean up the quick bars down here a little bit. And pretty sure I can just apply the animal focus to the Mastodon willy nilly. Let's take a quick look. Animal focus. Or is this just a permanent thing that you get to swap in and out in this game? Swift action. Yeah, doesn't have a duration on it, so I guess it just lasts forever. It's just a free stat bump. Okay. Ah, <laughs> oh, fuck. I mean, strength. We could use more strength. That's only gonna help. So we'll, uh... Just toggle that on, I guess. Okay, that just lasts forever. Very cool. And for the Mastodon, <laughs> I think there's actually a duration for the Hunter in the tabletop version. Like, it lasts like a minute per level or something. Um, but your animal companion can have it on forever. What are your stats, dude? We need you to have more... Strength? Strength good? Strength good. Strength good. For now. Sure. <laughs> oh man, it's so dumb, dude. It's so dumb. I'm losing my temper. Mouse focus. Oh shit, I could just have evasion. That's bonkers. Uh, we're gonna keep with strength though. Alright. Let's throw a couple of things down in your uh quick bar down here real quick. Uh, never demoralize. I guess you can have heal, aid another, dismiss spell. Might be useful for you at some. Eh, we don't need it on the quick bar. We want you to have channel down here. Give you a ye old touch of chaos. He'll never acrobatics. I guess you can take fighting defensively. And that should be fine for you. Airbending Mastodon for stealth. Yeah, they're basically like the flying bison, right? Request. And as for you, charge is always good. Do you have persuasion? Did I give you that? A little bit. You can demoralize. Demoralize, aid another. Leading touch is fun. Fighting defensively, acrobatics. All your judgment stuff will just use when available. All your spells are there. Well. And you, my favorite barbarian companion. Got that. Aid another. Fight defensively, mobility. Or your lethal stance there. Give me quick access to your rage. I think we are good to go. Let's do a heart save. A safety save. Great. Great. And I think after all of that, <laughs> after Oleg just watching us level up for about 20 minutes, we can finally carry on. Take that, you scoundrels! Oleg shakes his fist, but now he scratches his head and stares at the ground gloomily. <laughs> the girl got away, a plague on her. She's certain to complain to the stag lord. They came before to collect taxes. I did an air quote, even though you can't see it. I'm sure you could hear it. But this time they'll come to punish treason. I did it again. I don't know why. I'm not on cam. <laughs> now, what are we to do? What are we to do? Oi! Oleg! <laughs> Dub, why are you here? I told you to stay hidden. It's all over. Game over, man. Game over. I saw it. I just need to be sure you're all right. The woman looks at her husband tenderly, if with a hint of sorrow. Oleg mumbles something as he looks away, embarrassed. My name is Svetlana. 
I'm sorry your arrival to our trading post turned out so unwelcoming. Uh, I don't care about who they are. I don't really care that someone ran out of the post. Uh, let's get to the points. The bandits are going to attack again. Who are they and when can I kill them? Oleg waves his hand sullenly. Who are they? They're the Stag Lord's gang, that's who. These lands teem with bandits like bedbugs in a beggar's hut. And you just stirred them up. <laughs> sure, blame it on me. I saved your ass, dude. They have a camp not far from here. I expect they'll return in full force in a day and a half, maybe less. The Stag Lord won't take an insult like this lightly, and his henchmen are more like demons than men. So I need, like, what, cold iron? Silver? Do you sell that? Uh, I don't need to know about them. Uh, you do have a lot to fear, mostly from me. I'll help you. Don't really back down from a fight. Uh, let's see. I don't care what they want. So... Uh, they're collecting taxes for the Stag Lord, so I think I'm not really interested in your post, but never back down from a good fight. Well, thanks, I guess. I might even be able to scrap up some, uh, scrape up some sort of reward together for you if we manage to defend the post. Oh, we're going to manage. You know why? Because <laughs> I have the power of saving and loading on my side. We have to hide Setlana. Don't argue. Please get going. Move, bitch. Get out the way. Listen, can I just, uh... Ah. He's talking about setting traps. Box of Alchemist Fire. I don't think Strawberry Shortcake is much of a trap-type person. However, Whipped Cream the Mastodon probably has a very trap-like mind about them. So... Uh... Yeah, let's just do that. We'll look around. We'll look around. We'll come talk to you. We'll sell some stuff. But first, let's loot your camp. Yeah, we'll use traps. Although Strawberry Shortcake, I don't think is intelligent enough to use traps. I have a sneaking suspicion that someone on her team would be. What else can we blatantly steal from this guy? Sure, we'll spill some tar. And take a peek in this box. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> We're gonna take your spoon, too. <laughs> it's payment for helping you out. And your rope. Serves you right for leaving stuff and things. I lead, you follow. And all of your potatoes. <laughs> Pro tip, guys. Never leave your uh, sack of potatoes. Just hang out outside. A group of adventurers will storm by and take them. All of them. And then probably sell them back to you. I lead, you follow. Do we have goods up here? Anything? Anything good? Nope, just fire. <laughs> that dude, the chicken's falling in line. Knows a good leader when it sees one. Okay, there's no loot down there. There is loot right here, though. Heavy crossbow. And a longsword and a couple of bucklers that are probably not really worth picking up, but I'm going to take them anyways. Who could use a heavy crossbow? You could, even though you're not really going to be able to hit with it. I think you can take a bow. Why is your strength 18? Why do you have such a ridiculous strength? Fuck. Um... I might give you the composite longbow. In fact, I think I'm gonna. Here. 
get strawberry shortcake a short bow in case she ever needs to uh, light someone up from a distance. Since Jathel has such a completely ridiculous <laughs> strength score, we'll give her the composite longbow. Composite meaning that normally bows and ranged weapons do not apply your strength score to the damage roll. Composite bows do. So that should be fine. You, uh, you still have a plus four with this ginormous sword. So that should be fine for a little bit. We can slap you with a longbow at the very least. And Harem will give you the heavy crossbow. Because it don't matter. In fact, none of this matters. Yeah, he has a plus zero to hit with a heavy crossbow. But at least he can shoot. <laughs> Nat 20s do happen sometimes. Uh, yeah, I think that's fine. Sort this a little bit. Sort that a little bit better. Yeah, that's probably fine. Uh, yeah, the Mastodon will get larger, I think, at level 7. It increases in size to become large. Pretty sure. Yeah. That should be fine, I think. A big stealth. Huge stealth. All right. Let's go chat with this scaredy cat down here. Hey, Bulkin. You like my Mastodon? A frail, disheveled old man wearing a stained and tattered robe gives you a gloomy look. I'm Bokin. Bakin. Bukin? Bakin. <laughs> Local herbalist. What brings you here? Uh, well... Strawberry Shortcake does not give a shit about this guy, and nor does she care about him helping her in battle. So, <laughs> oh well, I guess. <laughs> oh fucking, I love RPing in video games, it's so dumb. Hi Svetlana. Nope. Uh, nope. Uh, let's, uh... Hey, uh, so I know I picked up some of this from your trading post, but do you want to buy it off of me anyways? So we're going to sell him a whole bunch of miscellaneous loot. And some shiny scales and a rusty horseshoe. We're going to keep the rope. It's actually useful for certain situations. Um, but we can definitely sell all this treasure stuff. So this game, you you will find food and you can use food for cooking ingredients for small uh, hearty buffs. So it's generally good to hold on to food for that reason. But all this treasure is kind of pointless. Butter, bloodstone. Books are neat, but we don't read. We don't read because we can't read. Do we need all these scrolls? And the answer is, I think we can make use of most of them. So we can keep them. Shield of Faith is good. Remove Blindness, I'll hold on to until I need it. <laughs> I guess. Bark Skin is pretty good. Alchemist Fire Acid Flask. Some more useless treasure. Some armor that I don't need. And a whole bunch of weapons that I don't need. To work light mace. Yeah, whatever. I also have these super cool nunchucks that no one no one in my party can use. It's really great. Keep the fancy torches for no real reason. Actually, honestly, I've played this game before several times, and these always just like sit in my inventory. I think I'm just gonna get rid of them. I don't think I've ever seen an instance where lighting actually makes much of a difference in this game. And if it does, you have spellcasters that can cast light spells as a cantrip. Okay. 686 gold for all of that junk. Sounds good to me. And you have anything particularly interesting. A bunch of masterwork equipment. Uh no, no. Heavy shield plus one's pretty good. 
Mastodon can't use a wand, unfortunately. Some decent armor. How much money do we have? 1,200. Protection. Yeah, I don't think we're buying anything yet. A rod. Yep, no, I guess that's fine. I guess that's fine. Ringer protection is always good. I mean, you will reach a point in this game where you're swimming in ringer protections plus one. Um, what you really want to save money for is I uh, basically you're going to end up managing a kingdom later on. You're going to want to build like property and establishments and stuff. And uh, that's going to burn through your money quick. So after playing this a couple of times, I'm kind of at the mindset of like, if I don't really need it right now, I probably would rather just hold on to the gold. Large person's funny. We'll give you bark skin and the big potion and a baby potion. Uh, you will give inflict light wounds so you can heal yourself because you're undead. Give you a scroll of bless. And then we'll give you these flasks since your uh, dex is pretty decent. So you can throw them relatively well. Aram, since you're effectively the tank, actually your AC is not that great. The Macedon crushes your AC. But I'm going to give you the shield of faith anyways. Give you that. Give you a healing potion. We're going to set you up with... Cure mod. Cure light. Your lights. And that should be pretty good. I think. Yep. Yep. Looks pretty saucy to me. So let's uh, hit up with another hard save. In case things go horribly, horribly wrong. Check out the party formation. We actually have a whole bunch of pretty good frontliners. So. I'm going to put the slow characters kind of up in front a little bit and off to the side. Mary moves pretty quickly. Let the Mastodon take point. This is a fucking weird party formation, but whatever. <laughs> whatever. And I think we're uh, ready for these bandits. I would say we're pretty ready for these bandits. <laughs> Have I tried giving... Okay, hold on. You're right. I didn't try. I just assumed it would fail. Hold on. I think I can get it. Maybe I had to put it in his paws. Nope. Wait. Okay. Nope. Mm, I don't think it's working, guys. The Mastodon does have braces of armor equipped. So, you know. <laughs> uh, I have done stuff. I've succeeded somehow. All right, let's wait for the attack. Amiri's super into this. Oh, you're going to help me fight. Okay. Uh, so he's going to use some alchemist fire, put it by the gates, burning arrow, make them explode. Good stuff. Uh, yeah, I have strawberry shortcake by her picture. seems like someone who'd be very interested in setting people on fire, so that's fine. Oleg's going to be fine, allegedly. So the animal companions in this modded version of the game at least can equip. I think it's... Oh, wow, get wrecked. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> oh, there's more of them. Okay, cool. Uh, animal, <laughs> animal companions can equip. I think it's... Uh... <laughs> womp womp. Bear traps get them every time. They can equip cloaks, belts, I think a ring, <laughs> racers, and maybe a helmet? Or a hat or something? Or like a headband? <laughs> Yo, what up, Mama Dragon? It you. <laughs> it's good to see you. Alright, Chathel. Uh, maybe we can hold on to our resources. So I'm very resource stingy in these games. Very resource stingy. If it's a usable item like this, I'll probably never use it. 
spells I'm often reluctant to use, but I will use them um, if necessary. Or if like it'll help significantly. I think all I really need to do is have her move forward and uh, wait for them to step on bear traps. So that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Why use the item to heal? I may need it later. And that's how you end up with 99 healing potions at the end of the game. Yeah, uh, you know, why don't you just delay until they've all moved forward and killed themselves? Or killed Oleg, you know, whatever. The Mastodon is, I'm sorry, Whip Cream is our tankiest of tanks. So we'll have Whip Cream move forward too to bait them into the uh, bear traps. And then Strawberry Shortcake right at Whip Cream's side, as it should be for any dessert. Uh, oh. Oleg's getting wang jangled down there. That's no good. So I'm going to move Harem down here to kind of help him out. On his next turn, anyways. Yes, come to the bear traps. They hunger. This guy with a bow is going to be a problem. Well, potentially. The guy with the bow is going to potentially be a problem. Oh no, Oleg's dying. <laughs> uh, my plan is going poorly. Alright, we're gonna get a Miri down here too. Just just hang out until next round. I don't wanna have to come to you. Probably can't charge through the tar. Or can I? I can! Alright. It's right over a bear trap though. Hope that's fine. Hope that doesn't bite me in the ass. Let's uh, activate a judgment, shall we? Destruction. Uh, let's do attack rolls. E. All right. Okay. Yep. I'm immune to pair traps. That's good. Oh. Womp. <laughs> it's 49 points of damage. <laughs> good God. We're level two. What? The I don't know if that guy deserved that much damage. Jeez. <laughs> Chunky salsa. Uh, can we take care of this guy? Yes, we can. There, good. It's not 49 points of damage, but I guess it'll do. Bye. Thanks for stopping by. Always good to uh, see you and uh, talk a little bit of Pathfinder with you. Die! Nice. Got him. Whoops. <laughs> I guess I am more concerned with killing the bandits than I am with saving Oleg. Uh, hmm. <laughs> oh, well. Yikes. I don't know if they'll ever remaster Champions of Norath. I feel like the game has uh, just been kind of forgotten about at this point. Whoa, uh, uh, are you okay, <laughs> buddy? <laughs> are you, you good? <laughs> uh, all right. That was neat. Good job, Amiri. Oh, great. Great. That went fine. Oh, Oleg's okay. Good. We're fine. Everything is fine. 
nothing bad happened whatsoever. Except this guy. Ugh. Ooh, a cloak. And another composite longbow. That's great. I think we're actually going to take all of this. Are these all composite? Oh, they are. That's so much money. It's 100 gold per bow. We'll take all of that. Of my way. Yeah, the mammoth, uh, the mastodon, sorry, just AOO'd this uh, poor bastard down here straight to oblivion. Got a magic cloak, though. What'd it do? Cloak of resistance. Hell yeah. Who desperately needs that? And the answer is, of course, my main character. Perfect. <laughs> Cloak resistance, plus one to all saving throws. Great. If you're playing Pathfinder, you want one. End of story. <laughs> It'll probably be the uh, first cloak you uh, ever buy or pick up. Yeah, the AI um, attacks of opportunity doesn't really register super well. Like, they're not going to five foot step back and shoot you. Actually, I also want to give you a composite bow. Actually, no, I don't. That's 100 gold right there. You're rarely going to use a bow, I'm sure. It don't matter. Hey, Oleg, that went well, except when you died. Oleg is breathing heavily, but he shakes his fist in the air menacingly. <laughs> Damn you, kids. <laughs> and your mangy dog, too. Yeah, yeah. Now, my lady, head on up to the guest rooms on the second floor. You deserve some rest after such a battle. I need to mop a little bit. And this is for your efforts. Now, don't offend me by trying to turn it down. Believe me, sir, I was not going to do that. <laughs> uh, I don't know if this was an honest fight. I feel like we kind of cheated a lot. But whatever, 100 gold is 100 gold. Also, hey, can I sell some stuff to you that I just looted from these corpses? No? That's cool. Whipped cream's pretty damn good. All the better once we realize that we can cheat sneak attack dice into him. <laughs> Later on. <laughs> when he's earned it. Don't mind me, just gonna loot all your stuff. Some would say this is stealing. I would say fuck you. Sure, why not? That's locked. But I think I can loot everything else. Here's a book that I'm not gonna read. And here's some fancy items. Some treasure, nifty scroll. And then I think these items are just for like owning the deluxe edition of the game or the whatever awesome package deal they have out for uh, Kingmaker. I think just comes with a uh, small companions that you can have uh, kicking around and then like a cool hat you can wear, which I'm going to take. And uh, this necklace, which it's so an extra plus one DC to all enchantment spells cast by the wearer. It's probably not too bad. And OK, we have an important decision here. All right. We can choose Head Chomper, which is a pet owl cat. Gives a plus two to perception checks and lore nature checks. Or we can only have one of these out at a time. Or we can choose uh, Tiger, which is a pet cat. And it's the same bonus. Who do we want? Hmm. Cat. Owl cat. Cat. <laughs> Owl cat. Take the man's cat that he locked in a chest. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> I thought it meowed. All right. Can the Mastodon wear the hat? The Mastodon can wear the hat. <laughs> it's a plus one to all skill checks. It's so good. Too bad it doesn't show up on the character model. I wish. We're going to give Harem the next list because I think clerics get some pretty decent enchantment spells. So I think we can kind of kick them that way. I know hold person, I think, is enchantment, and that's pretty dang good. Pop the cat down here. Right into my belt. So we can do a little, uh, little resty rest. You wake up from a nasty dream that tortured you almost all night. In it, you saw a wall of a naturally thick fog that surrounded you, slowly moving closer and closer. A quick look out the window, and you find out that the fog was not a figment of your imagination, not a dream. And then... Ellipses. Hear me. Please hear me. Well, Can you hear me? It's not quite what Please. I expected, but uh, sure. Okay, I don't think Strawberry Shortcake is too curious, uh, nor is Strawberry Shortcake going to flirt with the weird spirits that manifest in the middle of the night. Um, so I think our real options are fuck off or <laughs> what the hell do you want from me? <laughs> and just for a little bit more context, I'm going to do number three here. Aid. Salvation. We have a common enemy, and long have I searched for someone who can defeat him. The one you call the Stag Lord. Yeah, he sucks. As a storm strikes ruthlessly with gusts and lightning, mm -hmm. the Stag Lord wreaks havoc with the swords of his servants. <laughs> and not just in the world of people. <gasps> oh no. The land also suffers from the evil he brings. The land too, you say? And my flowers suffocate in this fog. Oh no, not the plants. Soon even I will vanish. I care about the that for some reason, I guess. Fades at dusk. Yeah, the stag lord's responsible for the fog? What is he, some sort of wizard? Yes. It hides his fortress as well as his dark deeds. Not his dark deeds. Why what sort of dark deeds? He did not create this affliction. It is the work of a powerful druid who mm. has betrayed even himself. Same though. I know not why I betray myself daily. Leave this renegade. But even I hey Chris, you should do this thing. Him. Yeah, maybe I could do this thing tomorrow. Rinse and repeat over and over again. Oh, I think that was enough exposition. Be gone, spirit. I've had enough of you. No, please. <laughs> this fog melts my power like snow under the bright rays of the sun in spring. I know not if I will have the strength to call to you Oh, again. you don't know if you'll be able to call we to me again. Yeah, fuck off. Just know that somewhere <laughs> in this forest lies an old house. In it is the key to the mystery of the fog and the secrets okay. of the Okay, search the full forest for enemy. an old then house. The then there's the a key inside this old house. And that will help my quest. Want to help me. The answer lies there. Great. Fair Good. Help. Thanks for that. Great directions. Perfect. I love it. Well, that was a weird fucking night. Man, if I had a nickel for every time a forest nymph came to me in the middle of the night looking for help because her forest was dying. This is where a Lindsay would be if I had one. Uh, so this character is like a seasoned adventurer, and what we can get out of them is, uh, um, I, I think this character is officially like one of the Pathfinders, probably like an established character, probably very canonical, canonical, <laughs> probably an actual character in the Pathfinder setting. Um, I'm thinking anyways, based on all the context of all this stuff that I'm not going to click through, but, uh, 
the the real purpose of this character is that this is how you create your own NPC allies for the party if you wanted custom allies. Which, um... I don't... I mean, it'd be great to make a full custom party, but I feel like doing that for this particular campaign, you're missing a little bit, because the NPCs do have their own personalities and quest lines and stuff like that. If Strawberry Shortcake doesn't make it to Dawnfinder... Uh, like, so, full disclosure, Strawberry Shortcake, as is right now, is relatively very similar to my, um, Coriander build, <clears throat> who, for, uh, those of you out in the know, not in the know, which is the entire internet, Coriander is a halfling with, uh, I think it was like a jaguar animal companion or something, um, and in her latest iteration, she was also a hunter that specialized in like wielding kukris and getting attacks of opportunity with her animal companion, and dealing critical hits and crazy stuff like that. This is kind of a slightly different take in that sort of build. Uh, you have a request. Yeah, what do you want? It's a personal request. Not important enough for my time. Probably not. I might say no, but tell me anyways. Oh, she OK, so Svetlana is missing a wedding ring and wants me to perform a fetch quest. Love those. Sounds like some good XP. Uh, read through all of that. This is the fetch quest to get her wedding ring. So apparently we're going to have to cut down armies of bandits to get her wedding ring. I have more important things to worry about, though. <laughs> but if I find it, I find it. I don't know if that actually, like, means the quest doesn't trigger and I can't find it, but we'll see. What can you tell me about the Stag Lord? If no one puts a stop to him, he'll ruin everything, yada yada yada. Uh, what do we want? Fear always falls. Power. Yeah, in life you either inspire fear or cower from it. I prefer to be the one who's feared. How many lives does this ring cost? How much blood will I have to spill to rec reclaim your stolen wedding ring? Oh, Oleg, hey, what up? Yeah, wow, there's a crazy fog that's locking me into a certain section of the map outside, huh? That's bizarro. I don't care why I set up a trading post here. Uh, do you know anything that can help me find the Stag Lord so I can punch him in the buns? The Stag Lord has a fortress somewhere in the area, but only a few chosen from the most trusted of his rabble are ever invited. The location of the fortress is a heavily guarded secret, and with this fog hanging around, it's even harder to find. Uh, we can try to follow the bandits. They came from the southwest. Uh, from uh, from the side of the Thorn River. Fortress may or may not be there. Thank you. What else can you tell me about this dude? Where is Staglord? We must punch buns. <laughs> we must throw hands and punch buns. <laughs> uh, everything went to shit when the Staglord uh, took over. There's terrible rumors about him. He always leaves the toilet seat up. He is an asshole. Uh, this pass is a mystery. Okay. So he kind of swooped in, took over the place, and killed anyone who stood in his way. More or less. Great, thanks. That helped. I guess. Here, buy my shit. Like that, 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 that. And all of this fun stuff that I looted from the people we killed yesterday. Very nice. I think you also sell stuff. What do you do here? He's an herbalist. He makes potions. He creates potions. And then he sells them. <laughs> uh, 
okay, cool. So he's just kind of he just kind of hangs out here. Um, so the unfortunate thing is that Strawberry Shortcake is not the sort of person that would ask, can I help you in any way? Which I guess just means we're not going to do this dude's quest. <laughs> oh, well, I guess. <laughs> uh, but he does have a ton of potions. And I guess some scrolls, which isn't too bad. Um, getting some potions to inflict light wounds for Jathel's. Probably not a terrible idea. I just wish they weren't so damn expensive. Uh, oh, she'll be fine. <laughs> she'll probably be fine. Oh, yeah, I had to bring out my cat. I guess I can't bring out my cat here. Oh, well. Uh, we can also talk to our companions. Because, of course, we can. How much do I care about talking to this guy? I can just tell him to fuck off. Oh, he worships uh, Grotus. Which I think is like the god of everything is doomed. Everything is futile. Everything will be destroyed. <laughs> um, I don't really care about his past. I definitely don't care about the dwarves. Tell me a little bit more about your god, though. Uh, what are your guys' teachings about in a nutshell? Yeah, so unfortunately, because I'm RPing a character who doesn't really give a shit about most other people, if you want to know more, you're going to have to buy this game and play it for yourself. <laughs> this is not a 100% full playthrough, look at everything run. <laughs> this is how far we can get with a halfling barbarian and a super cool Macedon companion. Grotus is the end of all that exists. Uh, look around, Strawberry Shortcake, what do you see? <laughs> <laughs> now look at me, now look around, now look back at me, and realize that everything will be destroyed. Our clothing and our armor will turn to dust, the walls of the palaces will crumble into ruins, the trees will fall, and you and I will die much sooner than that. That's not Harem's voice, that's my dramatic reading voice. Oh, Grotus is a timeless watcher, he's been locked away by Phrasma, curses, the, the goddess of rebirth. From her boneyard, he watches over the world, knowing the time for the final reaping shall come. He's the bloated moon hanging in the sky. What a line. He's the harbinger of the last days. He's the one who will stay when all the others are gone. He sounds dope. Um, yeah, that's fine. What do I think about Grotus? Uh, I feel like Grotus is actually, like, in Strawberry Shortcake's wheelhouse, so I'm gonna say it was interesting. We'll talk more later. Maybe we'll, uh, talk to him again and explore more of his dialogue, like, the next time we're at a trading post. What cream will rule a kingdom? I mean, you're not wrong. I think, uh, Seth said earlier that Whip Cream's actually the main character. And Strawberry Shortcake is the companion. And honestly, I kind of support that. I'm into that headcanon. Like, look at this majestic fuck down here. Look at him. <laughs> I'd follow that guy if he ruled a kingdom. Hi, Jathel. Tell me about your tragic backstory. What's it like to be undead? Uh, you don't need to sleep, right? Nope. I am spared from that bothersome need, but I hope you do not take this as a reason to invent additional responsibilities to entertain me during the nights I spend this time meditating and addressing the goddess. Honestly, uh, Whipped Cream is just Sir Barrington in Macedon form. <laughs> I don't really care about those other questions. But uh, tell me who you worship. It might sound strange, but I know less than others about Ergothoa and her faith. My, transform uh, my transformation into her Inquisitor was unexpected. But I will answer to the best of my knowledge. Let's do... What does it mean to be an Inquisitor of Ergothoa? 
The question is more complicated than it seems, and Inquisitor is by nature the most zealous defender of their faith. Unlike paladins, who just jerk off in the corner, I guess. The hand of their goddess is uh, the hand of their goddess in mundane affairs. When I received this title and power, I expected that Urkathoa would tell me my mission, but this never happened. The goddess remains silent. There's only one reasonable explanation I can imagine. Discovering what's expected of me is a part of my mission. So I reflect on this, make my prayers, and wait for a sign. Um, so like I said, like we could sit here for like 30 minutes and go through all of her dialogue, but no, <laughs> I'm not gonna. I've, I've done it several times. She has an interesting backstory. Uh, I kind of like her as a character. In most of my playthroughs, it's hard to fit her into whatever party I end up with, so it's pretty interesting to have her right from the gate this time around. And I don't think we want to talk anymore. But let's go talk to our barbarian friend up here. And there's Dog. I love Dog. Um, let's see. Oh, that's quite the knife. You bet it's not simple. Check out how big it is. Finger guns. <laughs> the sword belonged to a real bla uh, a real blasted frost giant. I killed the beast and took it, uh, took this looker for myself. Fits me perfect. My damn trophy. She loves it. Now, why don't you tell me just a little bit about yourself? First, I'm a barbarian. I am strong. Er, I grew up in the realm of the mammoth lords. You don't say. <laughs> I love my tribe, the Six Bears. And I like fights. You and I are going to get along pretty well, I think. Uh, let's do... Oh, we've seen her in combat. Let's say she's a good fighter. Quite good, huh? Compared to who? If I was a crappy male, I'd fight better. Is that what you say? Or you say I could be better? Like, go get some training, Amiri, right? And I don't have the patience for that. Just relax. <laughs> she's the... Yeah, she's the best. <laughs> All right, we're out. <laughs> oh man well i think that's it i think that's all we need for the um trading post i keep all my money i don't really need to buy anything we have we're fucking loaded up on healing potions and yeah i think that means we're good to uh bounce off and do a little bit of exploring all right lead the way whipped cream Off to grand adventures. Yeah, she is the best. Do you weigh anything? You weigh one pound. Eh, you can stay in Oleg's trading post. That's fine. We'll take everyone. Uh, so I don't know who's in chat. Has anyone actually played the, the Kingmaker module, like, at all, ever in the tabletop version? Or I guess also this game, but I'm curious if anyone here has actually rolled physical dice and played Kingmaker before. Ah, Matt's run Kingmaker. That's right, how long ago was that? God, which way do we want to go? Um, we want to get, like, down here-ish. But uh, based on the vague directions we were given, the Stag Lord's Fortress could be anywhere like down here. 12 years ago? That's a long time. Do you st still have like the full book? There's someone on the road. Get ready. Let's fuck him up. Oh, it's a talking encounter. A jittery old man in squalid clothing shuffles up to you. 
His gray hair is unkempt, and he continually clenches and unclenches his wrinkled, freckled hands. When he stops and looks up at you, his eyes widen, and he tugs at his beard. Are you the legendary strawberry shortcake? I've heard so much about you. I thought you'd be bigger. You may still have the book. Must have been a chonky book. Strange weather, invisible fog creeping out of the woods, soars beyond the sky, obscures the sun and moon. Strange. Old man shakes his fist at clouds. I don't like this old man. Looks like the kind who can cast the evil eye. Looks like a witch. He uh, look like a witch. Move along, old man. We <laughs> give no alms. Uh, yeah, I guess we're just not going to explore a lot of dialogue. Uh, I don't have time to listen to an old fool's nonsense and be gone. Uh, bulldog barks loud while cunning one readies to bite cunning short but stubborn that's me short but stubborn he is now in an ancient tomb that lies south of the trading post searching for the great power that once gave joy and now brings only death you don't want my nonsense then you'll hear sobs and screams that's my favorite sort of music actually once stolen, the land should be reclaimed. Once reclaimed, bound with the claimer shall it be. Bound, merged, joined by unbreakable ties, claiming the land, claiming its pain, claiming its death. <laughs> okay, great. Thanks, dude. That was a fun encounter. My favorite sort of music is screams and sobs. Big screams, big sobs. Uh, so basically at this point in the game, we just have to explore a little bit. I mean, we ultimately like have to make our way down to these points and I think I think there's a time limit of some sort. Um, uh, like a certain number of days. Oh, we're going to fight every enemy we come across. Like a certain number of days before something like bad happens, I think. At least in this first chapter. I know shit gets jank in later chapters if you take too long to complete the main quest. So, uh, is it just one dude? Just one level three warrior? No. There must be more. Maybe there is not. Okay, well, we're going to delay you. And we're going to have Amiri charge forward and try to chunky salsa him immediately. 18 damage, still standing. Good for him. Uh, we'll just, I don't know. We'll move you over there. Yeah, great. Good job. See if we can't get behind this guy. Run Perfect. <laughs> Setting up the flank. Oh, you cheeky bastard. You cheeky bastard. <laughs> Surprise bard. <laughs> he swoops in from behind and tells a funny joke. Uh, but apparently Jathel's immune to hideous laughter. So, <laughs> I think our Mastodon's just gonna charge this poor guy down. Oh, he has a reach weapon. Huh. Yeah, long spear. Hmm, I should have uh, realized that beforehand. So, uh, Whipped Cream actually provoked on that charge and took a little bit of damage. And then, of course, whiffed the attack. Great. You charge? No. Let's just move you down here. Despicable. Good enough. Yeah. All right, let's turn this guy into a paste. Never mind. 
like I said, let's turn this guy into paste. Close enough. All right, third time's uh, charm. Perfect. <laughs> He's, uh, really, really wants to hit Jathel with a hideous laughter, and it's just... She's immune, dude. <laughs> so I think being undead makes her immune to mind effects, and hideous laughter is a mind-affecting spell. For those of you who were curious... So we'll just take kind of a five foot down here. And take a swing. Nice. Fucking surprise bard. Uh, do I want this stuff? Take the armor, I guess. And what do you have, my good sir? We will not take that armor. We will take that sword. Ah, another hard day's work done. Oh, good. I only have 99 more random battles before I get an achievement for this game. Can't wait to get there. So as you explore, you'll also find these things. And um, these are resources that you can claim later on in the game to help your kingdom. There's like a whole kingdom management aspect of this game. It's nuts how much content <laughs> there is in Kingmaker. And actually really helps to explain why... Um, I've yet to actually beat this game. Got here. I'll go providing outsiders with fast healing now. And wait. We do it kind of a weird thing to just encounter on the road, but... Hopefully it's just the one. Uh, doesn't seem too tough. I'm shocked it's not attacking us. <laughs> uh, maybe we can do Mastodon tactics now. <laughs> oh, no, only halfway. <laughs> We'll try Mastodon Taxis again some other time. Jath will run right in. Oh, Blur. Bastard. So Blur, I think, provides a 20% mischance when attacked. So we're going to have a Miri swoop to the back to set up a flank. And no charge. Okay. So we'll just kind of step in and surround this guy. Aram, you're so slow. Why don't you just go over here? Go over here and look pretty. Great. So now that this thing has been thoroughly surrounded... Ah, breath weapon. Neat. Tear them apart! I, you know what's funny is I actually think uh, True Strike would be beneficial here, because I think True Strike bypasses like missed chances like this. For one attack anyways. Die! So we're just gonna slowly beat on this thing to death, oh, I guess. My Things. So I think because it's an outsider also has some damage reduction, which is uh, unfortunate because most of the damage I have in this party so far is just coming straight from my non-magical weapons. And he's beating up on uh, whipped cream a little bit. Out of my way! 
which is uh, not the best. Certainly not the best. But we'll get there eventually. <laughs> Still kind of surprised I'm fighting one of these. But since it was just one, there wasn't really too much it could do. So a little bit of XP and we can continue on our expedition. Whipped Cream in big danger. Not really. I think Whipped Cream has a ton of hit points left. Still trucking along at 14. Do a heart save. Oops. And I'm kind of just wandering around right now. I don't really want to uh, beeline to these locations yet. Because uh, there's some exploring that can be done. Like going here. So one of the uh, yeah, there is permanent death in this. So if a character actually dies, you have to like find a um, raise dead scroll or go to a cleric and buy raise dead from them to bring them back. It's the same thing in all games like this, like Baldur's Gate and Icewind Dale. If a character dies, you actually have to go through the regular means of resurrecting them, which uh, I think I mentioned this before. It's kind of a huge pain in the ass. So I usually just reload and count. I consider if a party member dies, that encounter to be a failure <laughs> and I typically reload. Uh, of course, if your main character dies, it's instant game over, as is the case in most of these games. Um, one of the messed up things, I guess it's not really messed up. It's also kind of immersive at the same time, but uh, you can definitely stumble on locations in this game with enemies that are way out of your league. You could like accidentally walk into like a uh, werewolf den when you're like level two and just get completely annihilated and that's not a great time but uh like it is what it is and i think in like an open world exploration based game that's just something that kind of has to happen uh, i don't think everything should be scaled down to your level <laughs> um there should be things that you find and may have to come back to and uh the good thing about the video game versus tabletop, I guess, is that you do have that ability to reload and uh, retry. Whereas if that situation were to happen in the tabletop game and your party gets massacred because you um, decide to go the wrong way into a dungeon and oops your way into a boss fight that you can't handle, then, uh, you know, that's just game over. <laughs> There's nothing else to be done about it. But at least if you do that, in this game, you can just reload, kick back, and uh, try something else. I guess that'd be a weird thing to bring up at the table. Like, hey, I know this boss killed us. Can we just, like, rewind? <laughs> Werewolf Den wasn't on my bingo chart. Hey, if you're making bingo charts for this game, please share. The hell is this? Oh. Uh... A large water elemental. I... Speaking of these encounters, I don't know if I can take that right now. <laughs> uh, I'm actually fairly certain that I can't, even though I don't know any of its stats. I could try. We do it my way. Let's uh, give it an old wingding, shall we? I'll do a little save. We'll apply animal aspects, which I forgot to do. Uh, we can pre-buff with super cool spells, maybe. This is gonna be tough. Bark skin. Oh, what do we want to do? Oh, well, let's just test the waters and see how hopeless this is. Can make bingo charts for chat to play with. Uh, yeah, I could make bingo charts. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of stuff to find in this game. Uh, we can lead with Mastodon tactics. Let's do that. 
Zero percent chance this goes wrong. <laughs> this is gonna go wrong immediately. Can't charge, so we'll just have you move up. And more AC. Which one of these is AC? We'll do that one. Alright. Here I'm stroll forward. And s oh, it's a surprise round. Can only do a move or a standard action in a surprise round. So, we'll just kind of get everyone close and, uh... Can you even hit this thing? Uh... The answer is maybe. Looks like it has a lot of natural armor. How about you spend another round buffing? Yeah? Nice. And like, <laughs> moving over here to try to set up a flank. I don't know if this thing can be flanked, though. Okay. That's bad. Well, uh, one hit, whip cream's down. I think we still got this, though. <laughs> here, why don't you... Or I'll just misclick and move you forward. That's also cool. That's, uh... Yeah, this is a lost fight. <laughs> uh, whip creams down, a misclick. Gets most of my health taken away from an attack of opportunity. Things are going very poorly. So, we'll just... Quickly backpedal. <laughs> it's a large water elemental. That I randomly stumbled upon at the beginning of the game. And if I remember from fighting it in past, uh, past runs of this game, it's uh, not something I can really handle right now. <laughs> it's, it's an open world forest exploration game. Sometimes you'll just encounter things that are very difficult to handle. You know that, Matt. I ran something very similar to this for you once. Yeah, let's go to Nettles Crossing. Oh no, the bridge is out. Is there any other way we can cross? Nah, it looks too deep. The Mastodon probably can't swim. Once held a rope bridge, now it's gone. So if you're wondering why my character is glowing green, it's because if you hold down the tab key, it'll highlight interactables. And... Basically, I just wander around with the tab key held down all the time, so it's less likely that I would miss stuff. But then you also get these hidden loot piles that your characters are going to roll perception checks against to find. And if you find them, you're going to get collectibles, like this coin that you can turn in later in the game to a specific character um, to trade either just for money or for powerful magical items. So it's always good to be on the lookout for things and probably to have at least one member in your party with a uh, really good perception score. Small house burnt down a dozen years ago. Exactly a dozen years ago. Those are some decent treasures. Is there anything else in here? I'm going to take this as a no. So let's see what's down this way. Boy, it sure is spooky around here. Oh, it's it's a zombie. Great. The corpse's face is bloated from being so long in the water. The stench from its toothless mouth is so foul that your eyes begin to water. The hand clenching a sinister looking spear is covered with scabs. Suddenly you feel faint as if a cold, wet hand is placed heavy on top of your head. 
wet hair sticks to skin and trickles of icy cold water run down your face and shirt. A hoarse whisper rises inside your head. There you are. Jaithel winces in disgust. What the fuck do you want from me? You see a vision of a man wearing an antlered helm. You hear a muffled groan, and the helm drops to the ground with a loud thud. Your hands are covered with hot blood. Too much blood. I don't think Strawberry Shortcake would ever say that there's too much blood. Death to the Stag Lord. Man, that's cool. Just talk in my brain. <laughs> uh, can't you... Uh, well, let's do... <laughs> I don't have time for this. You are taken in a whirlwind of visions and images, and you see yourself. You lie with your eyes closed, thrashing in your sleep. Finally, you scream and wake, drenched in cold sweat. I don't know what happens if I attack this guy, but I guess we gotta do it. <laughs> You dare threaten me? Strawberry shortcake? You're no better than the stag lord and his bandits. I'll teach you a lesson by murdering you. Without a sound, the dead man rushes to attack you. I don't even know if this guy's, like, tough or... Let's see. What are you? Two undead, one fighter. 21 hit points. I think we can take him. Yeah. Yeah, I think we can do it. Do a little bit of a chargey charge. Their insolence shall be punished. Mass Don, take a couple of swings. A little bit of damage reduction on this guy. Uh, DR slashing. So slashing weapons will go through it. Luckily, most of my party has slashing weapons. Pop chase a little over here. Unworthy. 47 points of damage to this guy. That'll do it, huh? <laughs> so, he is full of disrespect. That is the real issue. Yeah, yeah, I'll say. So the fun thing about scythes is that they have a time four crit multiplier, so if you score a critical hit with a scythe, your damage is multiplied by four. It's freaking ridiculous. And the fact that she has an 18 strength just means she deals so much damage. Um, I'm assuming that by killing him, I can't do his quest. So... Okay. That's neat. <laughs> Love that for me. <laughs> oh well. Oh well. I'm sure that won't be a problem at all. I'm sure he didn't have anything cool to give me. My favorite thing about games that give you alignment, like uh, decisions, morality choices, is when it's like, yeah, you can be good and help everyone that you come across and do all the quests, or you could take the evil option and just kill everyone. Uh, you can murder the stag lord because you chose to not the peer pressure. Yeah, I did not succumb to peer pressure. Oh, I just uh, wandered into a resource. Yeah, it's my own choice to kill a stag lord. I'm not doing it just because some waterlogged zombie told me to. Fangberry Cave. So here's a pro tip. This place has some swarms in it. Swarms are a huge pain in the ass to deal with. And uh, you want area of effect things like acid flasks, alchemist fire, or spells that deal damage to, area, to areas like fireball or burning hands. Otherwise, you're going to have a bad time here. And the um, swarms fucking suck, bro. The herbalist from the trading post, Bakken, Boken, he, his quest sends you here. And a lot of people early on when this game came out were like, hey, this low level quest is actually super difficult because there's so many swarms and they're fucking my shit up. <laughs> I'm not sure what's in the Endless Plains, though, off the top of my head. Aram's getting to be a little bit of a sleepy boy, as is Amiri. But I think we're going to truck on and see what's here first. I'm hungry. When we stop. Oh, hush. 
a little bit more adventuring to go. Yeah, Matt knows all about swarms. I love throwing them at people when I run Pathfinder. I think I did that quite a lot <laughs> in one of the last games that I ran. Oh, that doesn't seem too good. But it does seem like we can loot them. All right. Oh, hey. A wand of grease, roots, coal. What is this, a magic scimitar? That's pretty good. You can use that. I can use that. Does slightly less damage, but it is magical and it has a higher crit chance. I like the sound of that. A little bit less damage, better to hit, more chance of a crit, solid swing. <clears throat> yeah, I have a feeling we're gonna find out what killed this guy very shortly. Of course, Harem and Amiri are fatigued, so hopefully it's nothing too bad. We do it my way. Uh it might be something very bad. Oh. Uh you cannot stand against me. Uh hmm. Hey, it's a manticore. <laughs> it has 69 hit points, that's nice. <laughs> but it is a uh, six hit die magical beast. Its AC isn't super high. Wretched things. Uh, how bad is this? Oh, I might be able to do this one. Manticore is pretty sweet, one of your favorite creatures. It's cool, I didn't know that about you. Um, I didn't really thought about Manticores too much, but like looking at this guy, pretty fucking dope. I think, um, what's the game I'm thinking of? Dragon's Dogma? I think, I don't know if you fight manticores in it, but like, uh, I'm trying to remember what the intro boss for that game was because it's a similar type of creature, I think. Maybe it is a manticore? I remember off the top of my head. But uh, talking about fighting like big monsters, Dragon's Dogma is a good time for that. All right, what do I want you to do? Let's do... Smiting? No. You don't have DR, do you? No. A spell? Let's do Divine Favor. Let's do Divine Favor and have you step forward a little bit. Ah, uh, they're blocking the path. No. Alright. Amiri, just move over here. Whipped cream, you're kind of hurt. That kind of sucks. Uh, let's just have you kind of move over there to create space. Aram, hop here. Let's uh, throw a buff on your next turn. And strawberry shortcake. Can we spell up? Let's uh, acid maw. Yeah. Hell yeah. And then five foot step. Okay. Great. So. I don't really want you to take point. I don't think your AC is. Eh, your AC is okay. I don't know how many hits you can handle from this thing. So let's just kind of have you move there, and we'll kick on a Judgment to increase your AC a little bit. Uh, Miriam, have you delay until the Manticore goes, so we can draw it in, then maybe we can swoop in for a flank. No, not Whipped Cream. Oh, you're just murdering me straight out. That's cool. That's great. Love that for me. <laughs> 
Oh, man. Let's, uh... Oh, you're fatigued. You can't rage. Boy, that sucks. Wow, I fucked up. That's probably fine, though. That's less fine, though. All right, the Mastodon can take two attacks. It's about to say, come on, this AC's only 18. All right. All right. It's bad news bears for Strawberry Shortcake. I could heal her, but then she'd have to stand up and that provokes. And that's also bad news bears. Uh, this creature has a good fortitude save, so that's not going to do much. It's not going to be affected by fear. I'm just bless. Let's uh, take a fiver back and slap down a bless. If we kill it fast enough, Strawberry Shortcake won't die. The key being there if we kill it fast enough. Because it could just murder us. Despicable. It would help if we hit. Hitting would be good. No, no, stop. This is going so poorly. <laughs> uh, I thought I could take it. I was mistaken. I was gravely mistaken. Eh, maybe I should have completely uh, buffed up before jumping into this. Unless, unless... I don't know about this one. No, oh, we're just not rolling well. <laughs> I love how this game can't handle flying, so it just gives you AC if you're fly, if you like... If the creature has the ability to fly, it's just like here's some AC because we can't animate flying and we can't handle that dimensional of that dimension of movement. Your life ebbs low. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's uh, we'll take a reapproach on this. See if we can't do it a little bit better. I'm hungry. When we stop. I feel into my bones. That this one's doable. Um, if we approach from a different angle, well, at least we do get more loot. <laughs> Petrified egg. Okay. Won't be halted. Okay, so I think the key is to lure it in. So it wastes its first attack and then swarm it and hopefully kill it in one round. But we need to throw down on the buffing right quick. So. Let's have you hit up with Divine Favor. And then. Let's make sure that you actually hit. So do plus one to attack rolls this time. And we'll move you forward a little bit. Okay, great. Right where I want you. <laughs> uh, I think we have to take a swing. Because it's right there. Of course, this is all dependent on us actually being able to hit. Which hasn't been going too well so far. Aram, I need you to pull back a little bit. So that you can bless the party. And Mary, who unfortunately can't rage because she's fatigued, can at least take a swing. Or... Yeah. There we go. Okay. We just need some of those and we'll be fine. This is doable. Totally potentially doable. 
Like if she crit, it'd be over immediately. That's bad. Okay, all right, we're still in it. S -s -s still doing all right. Run them through. Whip cream going for the flank. Yeah, no, okay. Everyone can miss, that's cool. I didn't really want to win. I'm fine with that. Can we... Heal a strawberry shortcake? Let's do that. I don't know if that'll help, but we can pray. Okay. Slowly but surely. Of course, he gets three attacks and they hurt a lot. Okay. No, we're not dead. But, uh... One character down. I'm biting my nails, guys. This is a close one. It's definitely going to be a close one. Yeah, I'll just keep swinging, I guess. Despicable. One more decent hit. This can't be over. Great. I'm like actually holding my breath, like it's gonna do anything. <laughs> Uh, they just can't do it. Harem, it's gonna get worse. Everything's getting worse. It's all up to Whip Cream, <laughs> the real hero of this party. <laughs> Whip Cream the Mastodon versus his mana core. If you just hit once, come on, dude. What a waste. One decent hit. There we go. Perfect. Well, kind of perfect. <laughs> Skin it? No, we can't. We suck. All right. Well, uh, you know, we kind of brute forced our way through the mana core fight. Uh, but the important thing is that we're still alive. Fucking dueling sword. Oh, we get a belt out of this. Of dexterity. Which helps no one. No one's really a dex build in this party. Slap it on the whipped cream. Great. <laughs> oh, sorry, dude. I had to kill it. It was wrecking my shit. Speaking of, maybe we can heal up a little bit, just in case I find something else. Oh, I did that. I thought that was a uh, this body holds no more. inflict spell. That's what I wanted. There we go. Do another one. Then you. Why don't you channel? I killed a mana core. I mean, to be fair, it was eating my face, so. <laughs> I didn't have much of a choice. Our strength fades. We do it my way. Is there anything else on this map? Anything interesting? Did I just do this for a belt of dexterity? I'm kind of okay with that. Surprise, second mana core fight. Onwards.
Uh, so Roy shared one of his favorite uh, fantasy mythological monsters with the chat, the Manicor. Do we have any other favorite fantasy type creatures that anyone would like to share? Um, like thinking about it, I'm trying to think of any if any jump to uh, my mind. Um, I'm a big fan of Tucker's kobolds. <laughs> <laughs> a very specific type of kobolds, <laughs> but that's one of my favorites. Phoenix is good. I can get behind Phoenix. When we stop. Um, what's your uh? Because I know when you start talking about like mythological creatures, there's a lot of different like lore and history behind the creatures. What's your, like, favorite Phoenix fact? <laughs> like, is it, like, uh, that they, like, reincarnate or that you can use them to revive someone somehow? Like, if they burn up, you can use their ashes or, like, a uh, feather of a phoenix to heal someone or some weird stuff. Like, what, what's what's our favorite Phoenix fact <laughs> if you can pull any out of thin air? I require rest. Well, rest at the trading post. Uh, my favorite Phoenix fact is that, um... <laughs> Why were you running like that? <laughs> oh, every culture has uh, a take on the Phoenix. That's pretty cool. Uh, and not some like, I'm not super well versed on mythology, to be perfectly upfront and honest. Most of the mythology I know comes from reading monster manuals. <laughs> no time for either Scott or Logan. We do it my way. Well, yeah, I mean, that's super fair. Uh, but I didn't know that uh, every culture, you know, had to take on the Phoenix. I mean, uh, like every culture, like every single culture. That's a lot of cultures. But I guess you also get like the, the certain mythological creatures that are kind of similar um, across cultures. But like if you squint your eyes, it's like, oh, you're talking about this type of creature. That's just your version of it. I think that's pretty cool. You get that um, like having played and run Vampire the Masquerade for so long. It's just this collection of vampire lore wrapped up in a tabletop game. And it's really cool to be like, oh, yeah, they're just taking like this particular legend of vampires and applying it to this type of vampire. Um, and I, I think that's one of the things I found most interesting and in drawing about Vampire the Masquerade is how the vampire lore is represented in that game. Can we be vampires here in Pathfinder Kingmaker? No, I don't think so. Show me your goods. I've never used a dueling sword. <laughs> it's a whimsical berry. There is a mod that you can download and add to the game that lets you play as a Dampier. I do not have that mod, so I don't really care, to be honest. Am I ever going to use this potion of Vanish? No. Am I ever going to use this potion of Resist Cold? No. Am I ever going to use this potion to Remove Blindness? Maybe. Get rid of that. Get rid of the bowl, I think. Stone. Keep all the food. It'll be useful eventually. Want of grease may be useful eventually. Don't need that. 
definitely don't need that. <laughs> don't be lame. <laughs> I, I don't think I've ever played in a Pathfinder game with a Dampier. Or even looked into them that much, to be honest. And I think most of the reason from that is like... I've played so much Vampire the Masquerade that that's all of my vampire. So when I switch to a different system, I'm like, I'm good on vampires for a while. <laughs> I'm just going to keep hoarding gold. I'm not going to buy anything. I don't think. Are we doing an XP? Eh, like a fourth of the way there. Some, if I stop murdering quest givers and actually start doing some quests, that would uh, probably help out quite significantly. But for those of you proficient in path, Pathfinder Dampiers, uh, what makes them so sweet? What makes me lame for saying, no, don't be a Dampier, they suck. Tell me why I'm wrong. Yeah, so we explored all of that. Yeah, I could have bought like a ton of Acid Flask and Alchemist Fire and go do the uh, Fangberry Cave. But I don't know if I wanna. I think this is my next real target. So maybe I'll just make my way down here. Uh, I'm pretty sure that old man that we came across, like up here, told us to go here, even though he said that in a very insane sort of way. So I guess we'll just start making our way down there. Heal from negative energy, cool racial feat chain, bonus charisma. So they make pretty good sorcerers, I'm guessing. Uh, or oracles, maybe? Antipaladins? What's their uh, racial feet chain do? Oh, we can go to the hunting ground. Although the last sentence does say newcomers often learn the hard way how dangerous the area can be. Oh, well. I do love me some evil clerics. Big fan of evil clerics. This waiting bores me. Oops. Nope. Don't run that way. Alright, so I'm gonna give you strength. I'm gonna give you What do I want to give you? Strength. I feel like strength is just good across the board. Selective channeling. You and your selective channeling. <laughs> Selective channeling is to clerics. What power attack is to fighters? What power attack is to barbarians? State your design. Wow. Any other buffs I should throw on right now? I don't think so. Turn you off. Let's just uh, see what happens. Actually, let's switch our animal focus to give a bonus to stealth checks. And let's scout with our Mastodon. These, these guys might be... Oh, they have 41 hit points. Yeah, I think this area sucks. I don't think we should be here. <laughs> How much damage do you guys do? Yeah, that big of a strength. Though so there are a lot of you. <laughs> uh, we could probably kill some of these guys yeah sure here mastodon tactics we'll set up an ambush we'll put whipped cream in a flanking position we'll have a party rush over here right right who has the highest ac outside of the mastodon 2018 2017 
Dampier Feet Chain is all about drinking blood and getting ice bonuses from it. I can get behind that. That sounds pretty good. Maybe I'll actually have to look into it. I think another reason that I'm not too familiar with the Dampier is that the last time I really heavily got into Pathfinder outside of the Aeterna podcast, wink wonk, <laughs> is uh, when I was running Dawnfinder and that had all custom races, so I never really had much of a reason to look at Dampiers. I should really buy harem heavy armor. That's what I should spend money on. Less damage, more AC. Actually, that's probably fine. It's a damage difference. 10 to 12, 6 to 11. So take a 20 to use a friendly charisma skill on someone who already likes them. That's interesting. I don't know if I'd spend a feat on that, though. That's one of the dangers of Pathfinder. And uh, I guess also like 3.5. But there's a lot of feats that I don't know if are worth a feat. <laughs> All right. Should I have you switch into ranged? I could do that. At least to start with. Move you forward. Move you back. Alright, this might be fine. I guess so. I guess with feats it does depend on like how the DM's running the game and what sort of game it is. Because uh, I can imagine a very gamey sort of game where it's like, oh, you need you need the standard feet trees for whatever build you're going for. If you're like frontline DPS, you want your power attack and all that fun stuff. And, um, you know, the standard feats you would take for your specific class. But uh, if it's kind of a little bit more laid back and lenient, you can explore feats a little bit. Advance. You cannot stand against He had one shot, dude. Come on, he was flat footed. He sees four, 14. Sounds like you're telling me a damn pure bard would be pretty damn good. I could get behind that. I could actually really get behind that. Uh, oh, what is it? There's like, um, uh, an undead, what is it, like a dirge bard or something? Something that some of your, um, bardic performances have stuff to do with, like, undead or something, and that'd probably be pretty good with a dampier. Harem. Harem, harem, harem. How about, I think you actually somehow have the lowest AC in the party? No, Amiri does. Mastodon's gonna stay hidden. Move Strawberry Shortcake up just a little bit. And move Amiri over here. Plus is a minute per level. Do I want to burn that now? Uh, uh, yes, sure. So it's pretty neat. I, I think because of this game, I've been able to experience a lot more classes than I would have if I just stuck to tabletop. Because I think with tabletop Pathfinder, one of the uh, one of the things that I was trying to do was that was a pretty good shot. Was um, not play like the same class twice in a row. Like I wanted to go through the class list and try something new or at least a little different every time. And like playing this game has helped with that. Because I've been able to just like experiment with certain builds and play a little bit and all that. Like I'm playing a barbarian right now. I think I played a barbarian briefly once in Pathfinder, but um, 
point of the the rambling that I'm doing right now is for those of that's not good. <laughs> for those of you who have played Pathfinder, what is your favorite class? Or what's one of the classes you really that sucks that you really like to play <laughs> that you would play again now if you could. All right, we need Mastodon Tactics to go because I think they just frightened, terrified people in my party. Ugh, that sucks. This might actually go south immediately. Clerics, I do like that there's just so many different ways to play a cleric and what because you can do melee you can do just pure spell casting you can build yourself up to be a tank or fully support like cleric on its own can do so much i still really want to do like a rogue cleric at some point um or even just a cleric that has like stealth and roguey aspects about them what do i got going on up here shaken I think that's a, just a minus two to everything, which sucks. Let's hear you cry. Yep, and she's running away, and I really hope there's not more enemies up there, because that's going to get really, really bad really, really fast. Become as dust. Well, let's equip a melee weapon. Yep. And... Is your two hit five? Your AC is 20, isn't it? We can fight defensively and just try to stay alive, I guess. Stop this. Everyone's shaken. Okay, if they don't deal a lot of damage, I think I can definitely do this. Amiri, come back. Nope. <laughs> Repent. Despicable. Nice. Yeah, messes on tactics paying off, at least a little bit. Out of my way. How long are you should frighten for? Two more rounds. Okay, let's just, like, move you here. Okay, that's fine. Stay there. Your life Perfect. Low. That's what I wanted. And, uh, you can stay there for now. Advance. You two can just keep missing each other. It's totally fine by me. Okay, sure. That five foot step took up Whip Cream's full turn. Why not? Game's a little janky around the edges sometimes. Run them through. They go down. So, uh, Amiri's shaken by one of the or was so if I tried to move in she would just I'd lose control of her and she'd run away which is why I had her switch to a ranged weapon to fire into combat just so she could actually do something instead of standing there you can move in bud unworthy great surprised that's not flanking but whatever Perfect. Let's hear you cry. All right. So now we can have her move back in. She's not shaking anymore. Whatever. Take out her giant sword. 
Aram, you don't really need to do much anymore. You can just stand there and look pretty. Wretched thing. Wonderful. I love when she crits. We're not fighting defensively. Aram, you wanna chug a lug? Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Yeah. <laughs> Had to polish off that Guinness. It's been almost the whole stream. Definitely don't want that spear, but I will take their treasure. All right, that went pretty well. That went better than I expected. A ring of protection. Hell yeah. Mastodon can't wear a ring, unfortunately. <laughs> Chug a lug command. <laughs> I mean, I'm certainly not against a chug a lug command. I do enjoy my chug a lugs. Oh, yeah, that ring I got from Tartuccio counts as a ring of deflection or ring of protection, which is a deflection bonus. So I'm going to slap this on the harem mostly because. Until I get Valerie, who's a tower shield specialist, he's going to be uh, wearing heavy armor and be my AC tank at some point. So I'll just load him up with AC right now. I should be able to put a ring on the mammoth, like on one of the tusks, probably. I'm just going to be happy when I can slap an amulet of mighty fists onto the uh, mammoth, the mastodon. All right, let's see what other big bads wait for us in this area. All right. All right, I'm seeing something. Engage mastodon tactics. That guy could be a problem. <laughs> it's an ambush, Mastodon. <laughs> no one ever expects to enter con combat and have a surprise Mastodon attack from the rear. But that's my whole party strategy all day, every day. All right. Uh, you don't have any more blasts. That's fine. Speak. You. And I don't want to waste the scroll. Why don't you set yourself up with divine favor? I'm listening. And we could probably just try to power through this. Let's move I'm already. thinking that'll be fine. Uh, oh, we can set up for Acid Maw straight from the get-go. That's also good. Perfect. Great. Yes. And now, Jathel, kick us off. Perf. Wow, critical hit. 30 points of damage. Actually couldn't have asked for a better start than that. Whip cream, you stay there, hiding out of sight until the surprise round is done. Amiri, step forward a little bit. Just prepare yourself. Aram, you do the same. And strawberry shortcake. Pop forward too. All right, I'm gonna want you to delay until they've all moved. Mary, would you like to rage against the machine even? It maybe when they all start closing in? Yeah, we can do that. We'll wait around. Perfect. That's what I like to see. Chunky salsa. 
Love it. Nom nom. Yes, yes. Waste your turns coming to me. And then, <laughs> from out of nowhere... <laughs> I love his stupid little run. <laughs> Great. All right. Why don't you put that away? And move up here. Become as dust. Die. It's very big shame that the Mastodon whiffed. Mary, go ahead and rage. And you can start taking out uh, this guy. Perfect. Yes. No, stop that. There we go. Now whipped cream stealing damage. This fight is going very well. Much better than I thought it would. Out of my way! Tear them apart! And I'm gonna say that the reason this is going so well is from the Mastodon tactics. That must be it. Honestly, we could probably turn off Rage. I, go down! <laughs> I don't think we'll need it. And the killing blow? No? Okay. That's fine. Wretched things. What a waste. Let's hear you cry. Hey! This thing's AC is 14. Come on, guys. Actually, gonna change that back to strength. Don't need stealth anymore. Perfect. Wonderful. Got him. Take that light mace because it's masterwork, which means it's worth a lot. And we'll so we'll go see what's on this body. Cloak of resistance. Cool. Eventually, everyone's gonna have one. Oh, this area wasn't so bad. This area was a lot better than I thought. I was expecting terrible, terrible things like 42 mana cores and maybe a dragon or two. Instead, I'm pleasantly surprised. Uh, let's get that Cloak of Resistance on someone, though. And by on someone, I definitely mean Whipped Cream. Very nice. <laughs> Whip Cream might be the best equipped character in my entire party. Which is as it should be. I, won't be halted. I don't think we want anything else here. Except the gold. So we'll do that. And uh I think having explored the stolen lands a little bit and made some progress towards our ultimate destination, this ancient tomb down here, where we're going to find some things. <laughs> um, I think with that, and since we're approaching on midnight, that's probably a good place to call it so I can lay down a hard save. And I can see where I'm going to kick everyone else out to. I kind of want to do it to the same guy we raided last week because he's also playing Pathfinder Kingmaker and I was very pleased that Matt found his uh <laughs> his stream so let me see if I can set that up but thank you guys for showing up <laughs> showing up to the party um yeah this is Kingmaker this is pretty much what Kingmaker is 
and uh, yeah, I have fun with it. You know, it's just tabletop game and video game format. Roll some dice, have some fun. I do still like talking about Pathfinder and, uh, you know, it pleases me to be able to do so. So. Let's see how the hell I spell this dude's name. Let's see, hopefully that's right. Uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, so uh yeah, yeah. I uh, appreciate it, guys. Always good to hang out with you. The the usual crowd. The the big fans, the true fans. <laughs> but uh I'll see you guys. I'll do this again next Wednesday just because I like playing Pathfinder K Maker so much. So thanks again and uh catch you guys next time.